the fueling process began at about T minus 38 minutes when the SpaceX launch director made that call on the start of prop load tonight. Began with the fueling process beginning at the T minus 35 minute mark with RP-1, a rocket grade kerosene, being loaded on board the Falcon 9's first and second stages and liquid oxygen being loaded on board the Falcon 9's first stage. T minus 30 minutes is when they began loading that cryogenic helium on board the uh, pressure vessels on the Falcon 9's first stage. Helps pressurize the main propellant tanks during flight. That same process began on the second stage at about the T minus 26 minute mark. T minus 23 minutes is when the loading of second stage RP-1 wrapped up. That was followed by the so-called big vent at about T minus 20 minutes 50 seconds. Setting up for second stage liquid oxygen load to begin, which started about 20 or so seconds ago. Coming up the next milestones here, of course, are the chill down of the nine Merlin 1D engines by flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and the turbo pumps. That will be followed a minute later by the first stage kerosene load wrapping up. In T minus four and a half minutes, the strong back retract sequence begins. Here at Vandenberg, after the clamp arms open up, the transporter erector reclines about 13 degrees away from the Falcon 9 rocket. It stays in that position until liftoff. T minus three minutes, the first stage liquid oxygen tank is full. A minute later, the second stage LOX tank wraps up filling which point the Falcon 9 is fully loaded with 1 million pounds of propellant. In the final 60 seconds, control of the countdown is handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computers. The propellant tanks are brought up to flight pressure. SpaceX launch director will give their go for launch at 45 seconds out. The engine ignition command is issued at T minus three seconds. And if all nine and Merlin 1D engines are healthy and ignite, the command will be given for the hold down clamps to release the Falcon 9 for a T-0 liftoff Coming up, T minus 14 minutes, 18 seconds and counting. About where this Falcon 9 is going to be flying once it leaves the pad. Let's talk a little trajectory, shall we? This mission's Starlink 9-1, sending up 20 more Starlink satellites. Fairly similar to the eighth shell in this regard. It's going to be flying in a southeasterly trajectory once it leaves Space Launch Complex 4 East there at Vandenberg. First stage boost are going to be landing on the SpaceX drone ship based out here in California, which of course is, of course, I still love you. Payload fairings will also be jettisoned a little bit downrange of the map you see here on the screen as well. Scooped up by a recovery vessel and like the booster brought back in for refurbishment and turn around for a future mission. SpaceX is in the process of certifying both its first stage boosters as well as its payload fairings for up to 40 flights. If all goes well with this mission and the booster recovery, this will mark the 93rd booster landing for, of course, I still love you, and the 250th booster landing on a drone ship to date. I want to thank Artemis again for another big round of generosity, gifting another 50 Space Flight Now memberships. Big ups to you, Artemis. Thank you so much for continuing to grow our wonderful membership community here on YouTube. When someone gifts memberships, just as a reminder, because I saw some folks asking about it in the live chat, it is randomized as to who gets them. So the neither the gifter nor we really have any control over that. But... We certainly welcome our newest members, and we love to see current members gifting channel memberships as a way to uh, organically grow our little community here. Very much appreciate that. We're now T-minus 8 minutes, 35 seconds and counting, just about a minute and a half away from the point at which SpaceX will start that engine shill process. So far, things going fairly smoothly here on this Falcon flight. Of course, last Friday, this past Friday, SpaceX did encounter an issue during the engine ignition sequence. 
when it tried to launch the Starlink 10-2 mission. We're expecting that flight to happen a little bit later this week, and so we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Obviously, depending in part on the timing of the Astra 1P launch on behalf of Luxembourg-based company SES. And that mission very much being driven by the weather, which tomorrow does not look great, but the day after that also doesn't look great, but it does look slightly better than the conditions that we're going to see on Wednesday. So hope springs eternal. And we will, of course, continue to track that launch whenever it does happen. Be sure to check out spaceflightnow.com and look up the launch schedule for further updates on that. We'll be sure to have a preview article up so you can easily navigate to our YouTube live coverage when we're ready to begin that as well for that mission. On board this Falcon 9 rocket, of course, our 20 Starlink V2 mini satellites. This is an image from an earlier launch of what they look like stacked in their launch configuration. Among those 13 feature the direct cell capability. SpaceX continues to build out that part of its Starlink infrastructure. As this structure uh, continues to be built out so far, SpaceX has launched 64 of these DTC satellites. This mission will bring the total up to 77. Each of these Starlinks clocks in at about 1,760 pounds or about 800 kilograms. With their solar panels unfurled, they have a wingspan of about 100 feet or 30 meters. They use argon hull thrusters for in-orbit maneuvering, as opposed to the previously used krypton hull thrusters. They were built in Redmond, Washington, near Seattle. They'll be deployed at about 180 miles or 290 kilometers in altitude and a 53-degree inclination. If that sounds familiar to the Shell 8 piece of the Starlink architecture, well, it very much is. Here's an image of what a V2 mini satellite looks like as captured by another on-orbit satellite owned by HEO Robotics. This image snapped last year. We're now at T minus four minutes, 57 seconds and counting. We should be getting some live camera video feed from SpaceX momentarily, as well as some pad audio. And with that, we have, as you can see here on your screen, just a stunning sunset view of the Falcon 9 rocket. Just, pardon the pun, night and day difference between this Falcon 9 vantage point and what we're seeing here in Florida. So all things being equal in about four and a half minutes, we should have a spectacular sunset launch of this Falcon 9. And as you see here on your screen, now T minus three minutes, 47 seconds and counting. The strong back or the transporter erector reclining away from the Falcon 9 rocket. Once it finishes this slight lean back, again, it'll stay in this position until the rocket is ready to leave the pad and it'll pull back in a much more rapid fashion at that point.
stage one locks load is complete. And with that call, the Falcon 9 is now nearly done with fueling. Just the second stage locks tank to go. As we're coming into the final two and a half minutes before liftoff, I want to thank the more than 19,000 of you who are joining with us live this evening. Certainly appreciate you all being with us. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button to allow some more folks to find their way on in to our live coverage. So we now have just about two minutes before the planned liftoff of this Falcon 9 rocket. Also want to briefly thank a few more folks for your support tonight. Thanks to Sylvia Kane for a $10 super chat. Thank you, Sylvia. John Grimsley with a $2 super chat. Thank you, John. Tater Bear with a $2 super chat as well, saying beautiful here in Lumpuk. Schlatz, hope I'm pronouncing that right, with a $10 super chat. Thank you, Schlatz. Very fun name to say. Losos with a $10 super chat as well. Thank you. Stage two locks load is complete. And with that call out, the Falcon 9 is now fully fueled with a million pounds of propellant. About a minute and a half before a liftoff here. You see and hearing on your screen are the ground gas closeouts. Sure to that call momentarily. Falcon 9 is in startup. Good call here from SpaceX, and we're now less than a minute before liftoff. I promise we'll come back to the live chat on the other side of liftoff. Go but for launch. With that call from the SpaceX launch director, as you heard, we are go for launch. And while we didn't get a launch from Cape Canaveral, we are just more a little more than 30 seconds away from a Falcon flight here in California. Two minutes, 30 seconds. And with that, we're going to go ahead and listen into the final seconds of the SpaceX count, and we'll be back with you on the other side of liftoff. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And liftoff is about to nine. Go SpaceX. Go direct and tell. Vehicle is pitching down range. Stage one chamber pressures are nominal. Vehicle is supersonic. Power and telemetry nominal. Max Q. And a lovely lift off of the Falcon 9 rocket from Vandenberg. Coming up on a few different events in fairly rapid succession here. Coming up at T plus two minutes and 30 seconds, we'll see first stage main engine cutoff. That'll be Impact followed started. by stage separation four seconds after that. The Merlin vacuum mentioned on the second stage will ignite at T plus two minutes and 41 seconds. And the fairings will deploy just past the three minute mark. The call from SpaceX you just heard. And back chill, they are thermally conditioning that Merlin vacuum engine I just mentioned in preparation for its ignition now two minutes into flight less than 30 seconds away from miko
and a beautiful shot of the horizon pulling into frame on the left-hand side of the screen. Shot from the inner stage here. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Some good call outs here from SpaceX. See those hypersonic grid fins now deploying on the Falcon 9 first stage on the left hand side of your screen. Coming up on fairing separation momentarily. Fairing separation confirmed. We're now coming up on the fourth minute into flight here. So far, everything moving along smoothly with this Falcon flight. Coming up now in less than two minutes, we'll see the start of the first stage entry burn. That Falcon 9 will essentially slam on the brakes, beginning to slow down that first stage preparation for the landing burn. You can see by taking a look at that altitude meter there at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Altitude has stopped climbing. The first stage booster has reached its apogee. We'll start to see its descent. There we go. And it'll begin to pick up speed, as you can see here, before it hits the start of the entry burn. That speedometer will drop dramatically. just about a minute away from the start of that first stage entry burn. Those bursts that you're seeing in between the hypersonic grid fins, those the cold gas thrusters, help adjust the first stage attitude of the orientation of the vehicle as it begins to make its way back down towards the drone ship. This camera view from inside the Falcon 9 first stage, or the inner stage, just above the first stage. First stage booster that you see flying here tonight, tail number B-1082, is making its fifth flight on this mission, having previously launched three other Starlink flights, those being Starlink 7-9 on January 3rd, 7-14 on February 15th, Starlink Group 8-2 back on May 10th, its most recent flight. Stage 1, entry burn startup. There you see a good start of that entry burn. Sandwiched in between flights 2 and 4, this booster also launched the United States Space Force, or USSF-62 mission. Stage 1, entry burn shutdown. Good entry burn. USSF-62 was an environmental uh, weather satellite called the Weather System Follow-On Microwave, or WSFM satellite. Coming up now on 7th minute into flight, that call from SpaceX. FTS is safe. The flight termination system no longer needed at this stage of flight. Less than a minute now, at T plus 7 minutes and 55 seconds, the first stage landing burn will begin. 
shortly after ignition, we'll start to see a view from the drone ship perspective box on the right hand side of your screen where you see the Merlin vacuum engine currently. Stage one transonic. Stage two FTS has saved. Falcon 9 first stage now traveling below the speed of sound. Now just about 20 seconds, a little bit less than, for the start of that entry burn. Stage one landing burn. Stage two terminal guidance. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And for a fifth time, booster B. 1082 is safely down on the drone ship. This marking SpaceX's 250th drone ship landing to date. Impact shut down.